Are you a businesswoman who is finding it challenging to get your ideas across and make a point? Welcome to Speakers Who Get Results with Elizabeth Bachman, a podcast dedicated to helping women get the visibility they want, whether making a speech or talking in a meeting. Every week, get valuable lessons from Elizabeth or learn from her roundtable conversations with experts and speakers on how to make a difference, not just a point. On to the show with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. Hello, and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, and I'm your host for this podcast, where we talk about how we can get the results we need when we're making a presentation. Whether you are speaking in a meeting, you need to convince your team to do what you want to do, or you need to convince upper management to do something. Maybe you're speaking, you want to present to get visibility so that you get promoted. Maybe you're an entrepreneur who speaks in order to get people to hire you, or you have a nonprofit and you speak to get donations. All of these are presentations that are designed to get results. And the great part, the thing I really love about presenting is that there are hundreds and hundreds of tools that we can use to improve our chances of actually getting these results. I had this client once. He was an experienced presenter and he had a big important presentation to make and he was nervous. And knew that he had he needed to work on it. But when I asked him, do you want to practice? Do you want to give it a try? He said, no, no, gosh, no. I'm, I'm too busy. I've got too much to do. Uh, I'm just going to wing it. And it, I couldn't force him to come to, the, to come to a session with me. So, you know, I kept offering and he kept saying, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to be fine. You know, I'm experienced. I know my thing. And yet inside he was worried. He kept thinking, will they still like me? Will they still accept what I have to say? A am I still okay? Can I still do it? But he waited and he worried and he worried and he waited until the night before the presentation happened, he called me up at three o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much because he couldn't sleep for worrying. So why should I sleep, right? Anyway, he called me up and he said, I can't do this alone. I need your help. So we met the next day. And since the presentation was that night, I just gave him three things to do. Two of them had to do with the way he was delivering the material. And one was a physical gesture he was doing that was sabotaging him and he didn't realize it. And that night, I got to watch him walk out in front of a packed house and nail it. He was great. He was wonderful. He did everything he was supposed to do. The audience gave him a standing ovation. And the expression on his face as he stood there and took it in made me smile so hard my cheeks hurt. This is why I do what I do. This feeling to watch people come in and take their power like that. This is the reason I'm in this business. That client was Luciano Pavarotti singing the role of Radames in Aida at the Metropolitan Opera. So, as you've heard, I was an international opera director for 30 years, and I trained people to make presentations, operatic presentations, that would get them the results they wanted. Now I work with business professionals using the skills I learned in 30 years in the performing arts to help people get, to master a message, help people who need to get results and to master a message that will bring them funding, allies, recognition, or all three. I talk about funding because it might be direct funding. Maybe you're speaking to make a sale. Maybe you are speaking to get someone to hire you 
or to hire your company to engage your company. Uh, some of my some of my clients do nonprofits and they're speaking to get donations. Or maybe it's indirect funding. Maybe you you're speaking and you want to be a better presenter because you need to inspire your team or upper management or increase your visibility and your leadership status so that people think, wow, that's someone I want to follow. That's someone I want to promote. Remembering, remember that speaking in public, the way you present yourself is one of the best ways to get noticed and then later to get promoted. For allies, allies can help you with the funding or allies can get you where you want to go. A lot of my clients don't really care about making speeches. What they want is to be heard, to be in a meeting and they're being talked over. Have you ever felt that? Yeah, to be talked over in a meeting, not being paid attention to. So help allies can help you be heard and then recognized, and then you get the direct or indirect funding. And of course, recognition. Once again, it's leadership, it's visibility, it's are you hireable? Is your company hireable? Do we want to, do we want to work with you? People buy people, after all. People promote people. They want to know, like, and trust you. And a lot of the people come to me because they're, they're annoyed. They have a message. They look, up at the, they look up and they say, I need to be heard. How come someone else is giving this message and I'm not? Have you ever felt that? Have you ever sat in the audience and looked up at the presenter and thought, damn, I'm twice as smart as that person. Why isn't that me up there? That's what funding allies and recognition can be the results that you can get. So how do we do this? This again is, there are many techniques. I think it breaks down into three things. You need a strategy, you need a script, and you need a good style. Strategy. What's the right strategy for being noticed, for getting the results that you want? It might not be you. It might just be that you're speaking to the wrong people, especially if you're speaking to promote your company or your service. If you're not speaking to the right audience, then if they don't think you're relevant, they're not going to pay attention. Uh, for instance, I'm happily married. So please don't invite me to a presentation about how to find a good date. Go on dating. It's fine. I, thank God. I don't have to do that anymore. What is relevant to the people you want to talk to? Who needs to hear what you have to say? Finding the strategy is important. If you're speaking within a meeting and you're not being heard, then who are they? You know who's listening to you. What you need is the strategy to reach them. Strategy was a big thing that we used with my client, Anna. She's a regional manager for an international company and She's responsible for a huge territory, basically the whole West Coast of the United States. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of business that she generates. And it's an old company. And she was the only female regional manager. She was the only woman. And she's very friendly. She's soft spoken. She doesn't want to push. And she found that on the conference calls, she wasn't being listened to. People weren't paying attention to her. They were talking over her, or sometimes she would make a suggestion and no one would listen. And then five minutes later, somebody else would suggest it as if they'd thought of it. I don't know if you've ever had that one, but that happens a lot and it's really infuriating. There are strategies for dealing with it. 
What we did was we sat down and we analyzed who were the decision makers, who were the people who needed to pay attention to her, and then devised a strategy where she could leverage her position in California to be listened to. If they weren't listening to her directly, some of it was the way she was saying it, but some of it was to get them to pay attention to her as somebody important. So for instance, she's in Silicon Valley. I said, come up with some things that Mark Zuckerberg says about Facebook or Jeff Bezos or some of the big famous CEOs in Silicon Valley. And then you can say, yeah, you know, the other day, I heard Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook say this, or I heard somebody say that. You can pre-practice, you come up with some sound bites that actually came from somebody that they will listen to, they're not gonna listen to you, have somebody that they will listen to, to find the quote that's going to illustrate what you want to say, and then use that. We worked on that for about four months. And by the end of it, people were listening to her. Then she was able to say the things she really needed to say because they were paying attention. But first, she had to have a strategy to get their attention. We did a lot of other things in terms of script and style, but it was strategy that really made the difference. The second key is script. By that, I mean the language that you use that will reach the people who need to hear you. You've got to reach people the way they're ready to listen. One of the problems that happens all the time, uh, especially with people who are really, really smart and they know a whole lot about something complicated, is they'll go on and on about how to do what they want to do and forget to talk about why. This is one of the things that speakers who are trying to sell a product or sell their services fall into all the time. It's a trap. The thing is, why should they care? Why does it need, why do they need to know this? One of the ways, and I actually, to tell you the truth, this is sales 101 and speaking is sales. You know, it's, Sell the benefits, not the features. Sell the sizzle, not the steak, if you will. And yet, it's really easy to fall into that, especially if you're an expert, especially if you're really good at what you do. So go back and pay attention to who's listening and what do they need to believe, what's in it for them. Again, rule number one, make it about them. As you do this, remember that, especially if you're talking to, to people who need to hire you or hire your company, you have to address them where they are. What do they want? What's the problem that you solve? And then it may not be what they need, but what's the problem that they think they have? What is it that has made them come to this sales conversation or this speech, what do they hope you can do for them? Once, you, once they've hired you, you can give them what they need, but you've got to address what they want first. The key to the words and the script is sell the sizzle, not the steak. Now, the other thing that is part of this, this is strategy, script, and style all together, because uh, it, it does, it all meshes together, is that once you have a script, once you have something that's going to work for you, you want to then augment it. And that when I work with speakers, we have 17 speaker keys that we add in. You don't have to do it all at once. And you know, if you're talking to the same people every day and your, and your language channel, your content changes, such as inside a company, you don't have to do it for everything. But if you have a, an important presentation, take the time 
to get the script right, get your presentation right, and use these techniques. This is something that my client, Brooke, did. She was doing a presentation. She used to speak all the time to the finance department, to the accountants in her company. And she was a very organized person. She was all about lists. So she'd go list, 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 numbers, 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 numbers. And then she got promoted. And she had to also speak to the marketing team. And they didn't get it. The accountants loved what she did. She would do short presentations to them that were full of numbers, full of lists, full of graphs. When she tried to do that with the marketing team, they were creatives. They didn't get it. And they absolutely zoned out and they didn't do what she needed them to do. So she called me up and she said, what's going on? What's going on? How am I doing this wrong? And why is it not making sense? And we analyzed the people that she was speaking to. There again, this is strategy and script together. And realized that for the creatives, she had to add more visual things. She couldn't just do lists. She had to do pictures. These were people who were visual learners. And they, would, they zoned out when you told them about files and charts and graphs. Even if she had a chart and a graph, she would use a metaphor. So Brooke changed the way she delivered things, she, the same information, but she did it more with pictures and also interactive things so that people could look and respond and talk to her more. And then the marketing team really did what they wanted. It's one of the things that I find with people Again, the very smart, I mostly work with smart, experienced speakers who are getting some results, but really need to get better ones. My client, Sally, runs a manufacturing company. So she's one of the few women in manufacturing. And she had to give a speech at a national convention. Now, she knows a lot about manufacturing. Although as a woman, she kept, she was constantly having to prove it. But the problem was that she couldn't really get to the people who did, who used her specialty. The part she specialized in were people who were, they were a few layers down in the hierarchy. She couldn't reach them. The audience she was speaking to, some of them were managers, but a lot of them were supplier diversity types, human resource types. They didn't understand what she was talking about. What we had to do was devise a speech that would appeal to both. So there was language for the manufacturing experts and there was language for the HR and supplier diversity people. We started out with a question. She said, okay, everybody, raise your hand if you get dirt under your fingernails, if you actually work with the machines. And about six people did. And then she said, raise your hand if most of your job is at your computer, if you never get your fingernails dirty. And they laughed and most of them raised their hand because they weren't actually doing that kind of, they weren't working with the machines that she fixed. So what she did was combine them. Here's a great trick. If you have to do technical information and you've got people who are listening to you who are not technical experts, say both. Use a metaphor, use a metaphor and you want to use, the, say, the technical thing. Say the technical phrase, use a metaphor. This is what Sandy did, putting it together. By using the technical phrase, the experts knew what she was doing, but the metaphor, the stories, were what people remembered. And sure enough, by the end of that conference, she had six interviews lined up with companies that had never paid attention to her before. The third key is style, delivery style. Now, your delivery style is really important. 
um, Albert Meridian said back in the 60s sometime, he did a study and he said, only 7% of what people perceive about you comes from your words. The other 93% is who you are in the room, how you look, how you deliver the world. So your delivery style is crucial. The problem with this is that a lot of people get triggered. As I said before, anytime you are promoting an idea, you're trying to get people to do something, or you're promoting a program, a product, a service, it is a sale. And a lot of people get scared. Have you ever seen a presenter who gets out there and they're all excited about talking about what it is they do and the cool things their company does? And then they get to the point where they say, where they have to ask for the appointment, ask for the money, ask people to invest, hire them, talk further, and they get all scared and the bass drops and the voice gets monotone. Have you ever seen that? I have thousands of times. The key is, again, rule number one, make it about them. The truth is, if you're nervous, if, you're, if your nerves are getting in the way of you having a comfortable delivery style, or if stress is making you not show up the way you'd like to show up, chances are it's because the voices in your head are saying, oh gosh, if they're going to think you're stupid. They're going to think I don't know what I'm going to do. They're not going to believe me. They're not going to like me. Or... I'm not gonna make this sale and that means I'm not gonna, I need that money. All those voices in your head, the gremlins I call them, are, well, they're probably from childhood. They're probably not real, but they do get in the way. I, I don't know about you, I don't have a voice. I have a whole choir. And when the choir is shouting with me, yeah, and often it's in my mom's voice, so, you know, that's even worse. When the voices are all shouting at me, I'm stuck in my own head. I'm not paying attention to who's listening. It's not about them. So the key is, think about them, where they're going to go, what they need. Transfer your focus out. I have lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of techniques for that, and we we'll talk about that in another podcast episode. But just remember, if they've come to listen to you, they want you to be interesting. They want you to be wonderful. So make it about them. Try to tell the voices in your head to thanks for sharing, but I don't need you now. And then your presence, your charisma, that's what makes people listen. My client Maria is the CEO, executive director of a nonprofit. And her problem was that whenever she got nervous, she would, she would sort of look down and the color would drain from her face and she'd start to mumble. So her words were great, her cause was important, her strategy was good, but she wasn't convincing people. She had the opportunity to make a short presentation at an event, someone else's event, not hers, but at an event that was full of people who would be perfect donors for her. So we worked together. We worked not so much on what she had to say, but on how she said it. And after we had worked on her delivery style, she went off, she did the speech. It was in another city, so I couldn't be there to support her. But she wrote to me afterwards and she said, oh my God, it was great. I, didn't, I only had five minutes and I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I focused on the techniques that you taught me. I did what you told me to do. And my team said afterward, they'd never seen me so grounded. They'd never seen me so compelling. And best of all, after the event, we got 
$18,000 worth of donations from 30 people. $18,000 in three minutes. Yes, it was great. This is how having a great delivery style, how having charisma and presence can make a difference. There's so much more I want to talk about. I'm really excited that you have joined me for Speakers Who Get Results. Please tune in to our other episodes. And if you're interested in improving your presentation skills, go to our free assessment, www.speakforresultsquiz.com. That's speakforresultsquiz.com. And you can take a quick assessment that will show where your presentation skills are strong and where you might want a little bit of support. And comes, what that comes with is, if you're interested, you can have a conversation with me about what you need and how to get tailored specific support for your situation. I'd like to leave you with one thing. I've been saying all along, any presentation is sales. And sales is like sex. Nothing happens till somebody gets excited. So this has been Elizabeth Bachman, Speakers Who Get Results podcast. If you had fun, if you're excited, please share this, share this episode, give us a good rating, and I'll see you on the next one. We have just concluded another great episode of Speakers Who Get Results with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. If you got value from today's episode, please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues. You may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources. Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes. And thanks for tuning in.